Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life, looking ahead to 2019 and what's in store at CES. Now, before I go any further, control room, can we uh, put up the, uh, the thing up there, the asterisk? That's right. Take everything I say in this video and probably with most other prediction videos with that, you know, proverbial grain of salt because I could be proven completely wrong. It's unlikely because I'm going to make relatively conservative to kind of medium, um, low to medium heat, <laughs> low to medium, not high heat uh, predictions here. I'm trying not to uh, to be completely proven wrong. And I will not be at CES this year. Uh, I've been for the past two years. I've been very, very um, happy and kind of lucky to be up there. And uh, I am taking a break this year from the show. I had, do have some friends and people who are who will be there. Uh, and I'll be getting some additional details from them and, and other reporting. So I'll have coverage for you as the show kind of progresses and it kind of gets to the end. CES beginning on Tuesday, the 8th of January this year and running through the end of that week. So the question is, and and. I have my reasons, a number of reasons for skipping CES this year. One of them is I feel that the smart home, as I've written about and talked about before, the smart home is getting to be a little bit, it's getting to its peak. And I mean peak in terms of product saturation. Um, if you watched the uh, the previous video where, where I kind of reviewed 2018, uh, there's that figure at the very end, 41% now um, in terms of the US for uh, smart speaker adoption or, you know, smart speaker, um, how many people you know, percentage wise own one of those devices. That's a lot. I mean, it's not 100% sure. And some of those people are not going to be owning them anyways, because uh, it's a whole population. So kids and, and whatnot. But Anyways, 41% is a pretty big figure if you consider that the Alexa, the, the, the original Amazon Echo didn't launch in real mass production. It wasn't really available to most people until the middle of 2015, which was only three and a half years ago. Um, and then they launched the, the, the dot and, and well, you know, the rest is history at this point. But I feel that 2019, we are not going to see tremendous, tremendous breakthroughs, amazing, mind-blowing products, because we've seen that, right? Think about the smart home as it is today compared with where we were, you know, we can say, you know, between seven and 10 years ago. 2011 was when uh, the, Nest, the Nest thermostat hit at the end of 2011. 2012 was Philips Hue with smart lighting. 2014, uh, yeah, end of 2014, we saw the August smart lock, you know, and, and other products obviously came around during that time as well. But those were some of the standout products, including, of course, the Echo and smart speakers that really started to revolutionize the smart home kind of and, and bring it to where we know it today. The challenge is though, there's a product for every category now, right? Think of all the different parts of the smart home, even the, 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 um, the less thought of um, in the, uh, categories such as irrigation. There's great sprinkler controllers, right? From the Orbit Beehive to the Rakio or Rachio, however that's pronounced. Um, you've even got, uh, they're still a little bit pricey, but for, you know, shades and blinds, you've got retrofit uh, controllers. You've got brand new ones from, say, Lutron Serena. You've got uh, other options that are out there. And of course, all the other categories that no one really even thought of 10 years ago. We've had so much progress in that past 10, really in the past five years, that it's tough to continue that pace of innovation. So I think 2019, and I think also CES, we're going to see more iterative, evolutionary steps than big revolutions. Technology takes time, right, to actually develop. So we are in that lull period where everything has been put out we're waiting for new ideas to come out. We're waiting for new technologies to shrink um, devices to make batteries last longer and just so many different things uh, in terms of even energy usage and wireless um, systems that are going to be more robust and ubiquitous. And we're still waiting for a, a, true, a true smart home standard. So in 2019, you know, beginning with CES, and I've got some notes here uh, in terms of, you know, you're going to see the standard things at CES. You're going to see all the things that get additional connectivity, right? You're going to see all the smart products that weren't smart a year ago. 
anything. Uh, and some of them could be helpful. We're going to see a lot in the health and wellness category. Think of all of the wearables that are out there. Obviously, people love their Apple Watch or their uh, various other wearables, Fitbits, and, and so forth. But beyond that, you know, sleep trackers and smart mattresses and smart, you know, sleep monitors. Um, so many things can be tracked with wellness. Things are going to be connected more than they were today. You know, you're, um, we continue to see, you know, proliferations in, you know, smart, uh, you know, scales and, and so forth. Everything will be connected. We do have to make that question. We do have to ask that question of where's that data going? Where is it living? Do we still control it? Is it going to be potentially used against us? So uh, when you're thinking of you know, these gadgets and fun things that are out there, please make you know, appropriate buying decisions. Do your research. But overall, you're going to see more devices get connected, some of them a little frivolous. Some of it's going to be gimmicky. Throughout 2019, what you're really going to see is connections being made and ecosystems being improved. I mentioned uh, in the review video about how Amazon and Google have really up to their game in terms of routines. Right now uh, on the Echo, which is something that I mentioned a lot and was you know, saying, when are they going to do this? And they did uh, finally bring this out. The Echo, um, whether it is um, tied in with, you know, whether you have an Echo Plus and you're connecting Zigbee devices or even Zigbee sensors directly to it, or you actually have something like a SmartThings or a Wink Hub, and that's tied into your, you know, just a regular Amazon Echo, or uh, it, it would be more helpful for the for the Echo, but you can have it say custom things. You can you can have a, a custom routine respond to um, sort of a sensor device, whether that's a motion sensor, a water leak detector. Um, a perfect example of that is the detector sensing you know water or you know a flood in some bathroom or some location in your home, and your Echo device is actually being able to state which one it is, not just, uh, you know, a blue light flashing on one of your hue lights, but actual context, um, which is tremendously, tremendously helpful. So those improvements have really started to be uh, made throughout 2018 to the routines for those systems. Look for additional improvements and look for additional connections to be made. Um, we saw the ability of HomeKit upgrades via software finally roll out manufacturers finally start to take advantage of that in 2018, kind of late 2018. Um, it's not an easy thing to do. And, and I know talking from some manufacturers, it's on their radar, but only if people really demand it. So if you want HomeKit for your older products, demand it. Uh, Apple also announced, um, and some people are using the Siri shortcuts and the Siri suggestions. Siri shortcuts are cool, but they have to be implemented by the manufacturers. So I just checked Nest recently, no Siri shortcuts. So uh, that's kind of a way to bridge home automation on an iPhone um, if you don't uh, own HomeKit devices or kind of bring HomeKit and non-HomeKit things together. But not everyone is supporting it, therefore you don't have a full ecosystem. But uh, the other thing to think about in 2019, this is really, uh, and I really can probably say with some certainty that in many ways, we'll be in the same place a year from now that we are today, right? Are we going to have the confusion of the various protocols of the various systems? Amazon's going to be around, Google's going to be around, HomeKit's going to be around, Insteon, Z-Wave, Zigbee, uh, Lutron's uh, Clear Connect system. You've got all these different systems, some of which work with certain hubs and products, some of which don't. Obviously, you've got Wi Fi and, and Bluetooth, and you've got companies, organizations like Thread and Zigbee with dot dot trying to make all this stuff work together. But the real question is when does this industry get easier for consumers? And as much as I would love to say, it will in say five to 10 years, I think that realistically, Amazon, Google, and Apple will probably become this, these platforms that people think of more so than something like smart home hubs. And my fear is, although Samsung is really trying to push smart things, my fear is that smart home hubs will kind of go back into the niche 
um, where they they were being propelled for a certain period, and I feel that they're going to fall back to the niche because people will think, hey, I can just hook up my lights and my thermostat and my d door lock and so forth to the Google you know Home Hub or to the Echo Plus or whatnot, and so the traditional hubs that many of us uh, who spend a tremendous amount of time on our automations, w when we think of a home automation hub, I think that's going to really go back into being a niche category within the next couple years. The other question is, we've seen a number of acquisitions happen, um, smart home companies, because they're basically hardware um, makers and they don't have any, they tend to not have any other revenue streams. Um, many of them have been acquired over the past two to three years. LifeX and Ecobee are two standouts at this point that are still independent. and. Um, my hope is that they continue continue to stay around or that they are acquired um, to continue creating their great products. But I know from speaking with some of the companies that yeah, it is a tough it is a tough industry to be in when you only make hardware because as soon as your hardware sales start to fall off, you're in trouble. So um, that's a little bit of my general outlook. Um, other things that we might see at CES we will let me just say, we will see at CES, of course, things like smart kitchens that's been around for a long time, um, smart refrigerators and smart ovens and certain smart appliances, of course, make sense. Some of it still seems to be a little bit like, you know, those 1950s, you know, films where they would predict, you know, the, the kitchen of the future and it had all of this automation, all these appliances coming out of cabinets and, and so forth. And that was really cool. Some of it might not be practical. And still to this day, some of it really not might be practical. I, I like the idea of those refrigerator ovens that, you know, you can, as long as your schedule is going to be probably set, or even if it adjusts by a little bit, um, that your your oven could be a refrigerator and keep things cool and then, you know, convert to, um, to actually making your dinner. And by the time you get home, it's ready to go and you could adjust it if you're going to be late. So CES 2019 will bring us these various products, uh, one of which, uh, speaking of smart home hubs, we will see, um, and this is actually something that imminently that has recently recently launched so it's not brand brand new but many times you'll see products that have been recently announced they'll get shown off at ces sometimes it's hard to make big announcements smaller companies to make big announcements at ces because they can they tend to get drowned out by all of the other news so um you know fabaro was recently acquired by the uh, nice uh, group who also owns abode which is a home automation um, and security company they now have the iota all-in-one security gateway it has zigbee z-wave it's got your you know it's basically a starter kit it's a smart home hub and a kit and a security all in one almost a little bit i guess you could almost say it's like that honeywell smart home security system that they launched a number of months ago and that i reviewed and that had a uh, z-wave um, hub on board we're going to see more integrations of these various communication systems in these hubs to give people a little bit more flexibility in terms of if you want to buy something that isn't compatible with an echo or it's not compatible directly with a google home um, because not everything is the truth of the matter is certain products work well with certain um, wireless protocols and the systems and others don't. It's just simple. Um, and Google has yet to, and I think that they need to work on this, Google has yet to join Amazon in creating a, um, a smart speaker that is also some sort of a smart home hub. And they have yet to integrate um, connectivity to say Zigbee or Z-Wave devices hosted on like a smart things or a wink. I think we're going to see those things get ironed out in 2019. I'm not sure what Google and Amazon, Amazon also always surprises us, you know, with clocks and, and, uh, microwaves and so forth. I don't know. We're going to see the, the blitzkrieg of products come around from Google, say at the end of the year that we, we see from Amazon. And I'm really not sure what we'll see from Amazon next year because they've refreshed and launched so many new products. I just, you know, they're, they're throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. So that's really, um, that is about 
pretty much all I want to predict for 2019 uh, because I really think it's going to be about the year of making connections instead of necessarily this big blitzkrieg of products. Again, 41% adoption rate of smart speakers. That goes along with, you know, when you know, a, a rising tide, you know, lifts all boats. So smart speakers get out there and Amazon and Google both advertise the smart home heavily with those smart devices. And then people want to buy the smart locks. They want to buy the thermostats. They want to buy the security cameras, the lights. I still think smart lighting is the easiest sell for the smart home. Um, we saw Philips Hue launch a tremendous amount of products in 2018. They'll probably round out their offerings. Same, we'll probably see some of that from LifeX as well, and perhaps from Sylvania, who is generally the, the quiet one of the three in, in 2019. But it really is about, we've got all this stuff now. Consumers have all this stuff. You've reached a, a point where you almost... I don't want to say it's complete market saturation, but you've saturated a lot of the market. People are asking now, what are the benefits? What are the use cases? Why do I have these things? And especially when they get annoying to use or when they don't, when they don't work, companies don't want people to put them in a drawer, to uninstall them. So now it's about how does this enrich your life? How does this truly make your home smart? And it really relies on companies making those connections, making things easier beyond just YouTubers like myself and, and the other many other uh, quality smart home channels that are out there telling you how to use this and giving you ideas. It really is about the manufacturers making this stuff easier and making suggestions in those apps that you launch saying, hey, did you know that you could do this with this product? And do you have a product from manufacturer A, B, or C, and you could use it in this new way? Uh, that's what I think um, Apple tries trying to do with Siri suggestions and shortcuts, and certainly Google and Amazon uh, could work on that as well. So 2019, I think it's going to be more of a sleeper year, and we all also have to ask ourselves again. It's not just about making connections and making more use of these products, but really, what does the smart home mean to you, right? What is it? It's very personal. It's all about you and, and your own uh, daily routine and so forth. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to your life? And are you happy with what you have right now? Or do you want something? And what is that something? So my question to you, dear viewer, for 2019, in the comments of this video, let me know what you want. What is the like the top one or two products that you want to see the smart home industry come out with in 2019, or just some other wish list that you have of what you really want to see come out of this industry in 2019? Let me know. I'll put it on the next um, Q and A video, um, and maybe we'll mention a few of the the really good ones on the uh, CES coverage. I'm always here for your questions, whether it is about predicting the future or not. SmarterHomeHelp.com is a really uh, is a quick link to the form that you can. And submit your questions there and I'll get back to you. The most interesting ones go on the Q&A episodes. And also I'm here to help you if you've got some vexing smart home questions, projects or challenges. I help people all the time over a video chat with uh, consulting sessions. You can find that also at smarterhomehelp.com. And I think for this video, that's about to wrap it up. Thanks for a great 2018. Thanks for being part of the Smarter Home Life audience. I look forward to more videos and more exciting stuff in 2019. I'm Joe DeGanzik. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.